KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I am Joe Orsack, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 55 Four, eight. And now, the Real Estate Rat Pack! Uh, woo! <laughs> All you ever get from me is a head shake. You always, <laughs> always the head shake and always the howl, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> Good morning, Good everybody. Morning. What a beautiful Saturday Rob is morning. Like deaf in his left ear now, I think. <laughs> I know, I know. He's going deaf. He was already deaf to begin with, and it's just sort of progressing. Well, right you know, that happens when you get, when you're seasoned, as you like to put it. And stuff. It is a beautiful day in Houston, Texas, and I've Bet you there's a lot of realtors out there listening in and showing clients today because I everyone I've talked to is already busy. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, the market has been so far this year. The market has been absolutely tremendous. It's been really busy, a lot of activity. You know, we're only on the eleventh day of the year, the eleventh day, and I will tell you, me personally, has like had more activity than I've than I've had. In any given January, in any given year, yeah. in the past eleven years, and just to kind of restate where we are right now, is that last year about this time we're, at we were radio about station. four. <laughs> four <laughs> no, actually, What's we didn't start till Rob, we did Chris? start till March, but we were about four four months supply of homes <laughs> back then, and now we're down to two point nine. I mean, it's just right. it's incredible. So, right. and we are on the twelfth floor, also. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyhow, at the radio station. I, I, Rob I, stayed out too late last night I, or something. I, oh, I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And that is the sound of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you know you're going to throw me under, I'm going to pull you in, pull, 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 pull pull you in with, with me. So, but, wow. You know, we want to talk today about... We have got some cool stuff to talk about. We do, because, you know, there's, there's creative ways to, to buy homes, and a lot of people feel limited... Uh, said, well, this is what I want to do, and they may not be able to do it, but we have resources. There's some very new stuff coming down uh, in Texas that's brand new to Texas. You know, we could only get somebody to come in here and talk about reverse mortgages. only we had an expert to talk about reverse mortgages. I know. Who could that possibly (laughs) be? Who? Maybe somebody like who's... You know, been on radio before and has some experience and, with And this. sitting to my right, which is uh, <laughs> Gary Wood. Uh, welcome, Gary. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Gary is an elite crowd. He's like uh, one of only a few folks who have ever been on the Real Estate Rat Pack twice. Because most of them have better judgment about yes. coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most people are like, are you kidding? I'm yeah. never going back there. <laughs> Joe told me I had the perfect face for radio, so here <laughs> I am Absolutely. again. Yeah. So we've had a lot of things uh, change, and there's some legislation this year uh, that's going to change reverse mortgages. So kind of let's kind of get into that as to what is a reverse mortgage? A reverse mortgage is a uh, it's an FHA insured loan. It's a HUD program. Uh, most of what we think about as reverse mortgage uh, is from the HUD program that started. Uh, this program started in 1989 during the Reagan administration. So 90 percent of your reverse mortgages are through this program, and they are for homes that are appraised up to six hundred and twenty-five thousand five hundred dollars. And the other 10% are proprietary products from like conventional loans from lenders that are more like jumbo loans. And so in Texas, we have always had reverse mortgage refinance, which is also available in every other state. But every other state since uh, January 1, 2009 has had reverse mortgage for purchase loans. And that's where a homeowner can buy a house using a reverse mortgage. And that's coming to Texas now. Well, let's go back to the conventional, and we'll get to the other piece because that's the that's the exciting piece for me. The legislature yes. allowed it, and it's going to be a, a very exciting and a great opportunity for you and your business. Yes. But let's talk about the typical what we've seen in the past. It's a reverse mortgage. The homeowner either has paid his house off or has substantially paid the house down to low. Go through the logistics of how it works. Well, um, the homeowner gets. Uh, a cash advance for a portion of their home equity. So when I'm talking with a prospective applicant, then what we do is we look at what their numbers are, how much equity do they have. If they're free and clear, of course, we don't have an issue. But 
they have to have enough equity for the numbers to work because the loan is for a percentage of the appraised value, and that's based on their age. And the older they are, the higher that loan amount is, uh, as the higher that percentage of the appraised value. And what does the percentage start off with? The percentage starts off at around uh, 55% for a 62-year-old. And for a 90-year-old, it goes up to like in the low 70, like around 70%. So, And then you also have to factor in your closing costs. So, I mean, sometimes I will talk to a homeowner and if they've recently refinanced done a cash out refinance and pulled money out or if they don't have if they have a high loan balance and not much equity then the numbers aren't going to work for them they're not going to be a good candidate for that you, you know and, and one of the things also is one of the, the things I always hear out there is it's not only for people who have paid off their home you can actually have owed a little bit on your home and do a reverse mortgage is that correct Yes, you can have a loan balance, and um, it just has to, the loan balance just has to be low enough. So by the time that we uh, look at what your loan amount is going to be and what your closing costs are, so you just have to have enough equity in the house so that you're not bringing money to closing. Gotcha. Right. Well, I, I know that we have uh, a lot of folks out there listening, and this is a brand new subject for. Uh, Texas with purchasing and all that sort of thing. So I know there's a lot of unfamiliarity out with with the product, and we already have a call on the line. So we want to jump to our caller, and uh, I can't see the screen, Chris. So here's <laughs> John. John is John. on. John is calling in. John, how you doing, bud? Yes, I am, guys. Good morning. Good Great morning. Show, by the way, thank you. Hey, I, I got a quick question for you. Um, is credit an issue with reverse mortgage? Is credit an issue with uh, reverse mortgage, Gary? It is not at this time. Reverse mortgages are not credit-based, but we are going to see a change in that soon. A financial Uh assessment was set to begin January 13th, but HUD has delayed that. HUD has pushed that back. So probably no sooner than mid-March, and that, and maybe at some point after that, we will have a financial assessment. We don't know when that's going to take place. We don't know what that's going to consist of. HUD has to tell us that. But probably at the very least, we can expect that we will now be looking at a homeowner's history of do they maintain uh, homeowners insurance on their property and also their history of paying their property taxes. And so probably if we have problem situations in this area, um, one, one way that this could be addressed is the homeowner might be asked to set aside escrow accounts, put some money in escrow maybe for several years to make sure that the homeowner's insurance and property taxes, that the funding for that is covered. So, you know, now is a good time then if, if since it's not any credit-based right now, right now is a def- definitely a good time to give you a call to take a look at this before that goes into play. Exactly. I, I'm advising everybody that's considering it to go <laughs> ahead and let's let's get the process started because if I can look at it now and – if pretty much if your numbers work, if you're at least 62, if okay. you're getting the loan on your primary residence, and if your home is up to FHA, in good repair, up to FHA standards or close to that, then you can get in. But after the financial assessment comes, uh, then that's going to be more hoops that the applicant has to jump through. John, did that help okay. with some of your questions right there? That answer all my questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey, likewise, John. We really appreciate it. Thanks for calling in, John. We 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 are available for a call, especially if I can finish that thought. <laughs> 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 we are available for your questions. Uh, with Gary here, expertise on reverse mortgages like crazy. 800-808-5548. So feel free to give us a call. 800-808-5548. Eight zero eight five five four eight. And you know, Gary, one of the things also John was mentioning, a lot of times people don't realize in the mortgage industry, 
it's based on application dates. So let's say, for example, there's going to be a future change, usually in FHA or in reverse mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. If you can get your application done prior to those changes, then you qualify under some of the old rules, correct? Yes. Uh, typically, the when they have changes, and it seems like every year we have waves of changes. We had the program changed significantly April 1st, then it changed significantly October 1st, and now we're looking at the financial assessments that's going to be changing earlier, early this year. The change is based on the date that the FHA case number was assigned. And so that's the, that's always a drop dead date is like, if, if you can get in and get your case number assigned before whatever the change is being set to implement, then you can get in under the old program. Do you think they're going to use the same kind of underwriting guidelines that they currently use with FHAs, or do you think they're going to be a streamlined or different type of, of uh, credit scoring? Um, Good question, huh? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, yeah, he, he saw the light. The, the view of, uh, gosh, how do I answer that one? Yeah, he saw the blank deer in the headlights. Look, here... On, on these reverse mortgage for purchase loans, my disclaimer is uh, I've never done one of these and nobody else in Texas has. This is this is a new program and it's not implemented yet. So I will just give you the answer that's the best to my knowledge, the best that I know, and but that, that is subject to change. But I but I would just think that probably the financial assessment is not going to be um it it will probably be somewhat more lenient than with just a regular FHA loan. Are you, and, and then remember also, usually speaking, even on a traditional FHA, FHA doesn't set a credit score. FHA has never done that, even on the traditional market. It's your lender. Yeah, it's the it's the overlays from the investors. You know, it's the secondary market who actually puts we're only going to buy loans under this type with this type of credit score, et cetera. So a lot of what Gary is saying is. You know, unfortunately, you don't. We don't really know until the investors come out and say we're going to put this in there. Right, right. And as you know, Chris, when we talk to underwriters, and and we'll say, well, can can we get this through? What about this? And what about that? And a lot of times they'll come back with, well, I, Gary, I understand what you're saying, but I can't get my investor to buy that. We right. We have your your applicant has to meet this standard. Right. Absolutely. You know, and that's always important because people really don't understand sometimes about those overlays. So they, you know, you read one thing online, you read one thing as reference to guidelines, et cetera. Um, but then whatever the secondary market ends up doing, that's what ends up being the actual guidelines that we have to meet in order to okay. originate a loan. Right. So, you know, and the other thing, you know, one of the things we get a lot of questions on in regards to reverse mortgages is, number one, we already asked that question is, do you, can you have a loan amount and still do it? Secondly is, why a reverse mortgage? Let, let us know sort of what it. What are the true benefits? Because a lot of times people say, is a reverse mortgage right for me or is it not right for me? What are some of the benefits associated with it if I, if I own a home, if I want to look at a reverse mortgage, and if I'm of, of age? Okay. There are some advantages to it. There are some benefits, and uh, we'll, we'll go through those. But let me just say that with any loan program, it's not a one size fits all. You just have to look at that, as you know. You just have to look at that individual applicant situation and see what's the best fit for them. And right. it's, for some seniors, a reverse mortgage is a good fit, and for some seniors in their situation, it isn't. They should look at at some other type of financing, more traditional type of financing. But a couple of the features and advantages are, um, for right now. There's no a financial assessment, so it's not credit based. It's easier to get approved, and uh, many times, Chris, I don't know if you have experienced this, but when you have a senior that's coming in and applying, and like anybody else, they have to meet the financial assessment. They have to meet the income requirements. They have to meet the. They look at their assets and their debts, so. If when, if somebody's on a fixed income and they don't have enough uh, enough income requirement, then that's one way that we can address that problem is they will qualify with with a reverse mortgage. One of the advantages of a reverse mortgage is your monthly principal and interest payment is optional. As the applicant goes through their loan term, they can pay down on their loan balance anytime they want, as much as they want. But they can get their loan and live in that house for the rest of their life and not ever 
make a payment to the mortgage company. They that don't. is awesome. We're right. going to continue having this conversation. As you can hear the music, we're up against a break, and we're also up against having some of these kolaches in studio. So <laughs> we're going to take a break, and we'll be right <laughs> back. Well, you know, uh, Mike didn't like My head keeps spinning. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. You know, we are a family show around here, by the way. As much fun and everything that we do, we all have families, we all have individuals. You know, one of the things I did today, I decided to bring my son and daughter in. And while my son, when my daughter is sitting in the corner doing her rainbow loom really nicely, my son's dying to say hello to all the millions of people around the world that are listening to us. So, Andrew, say hello to everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Really? That's all you have to say is, uh? Yeah. All that. Okay. All that rehearsal. All that (laughs) rehearsal. (laughs) Hours of coaching. ah. Thousands of dollars. (laughs) <laughs> Thousands of dollars, all the coaching. You know, you've got your your father as a, as a real estate star, as a as a radio star, and that's all you're going to say, big guy. I guess so. Well, you know, we try to make it fun, though, right? <laughs> we do. We do. Oh, uh, you know, one of the things we've been doing, obviously, is talking about the reverse mortgages. And Gary, you were talking about some of the benefits when we got into the break, right there. I'll let you continue on. Obviously, um, we were talking about some of the bre- some of the benefits associated with a reverse mortgage. Obviously, for all those listening, we want if you have a, a phone call and you want to an, ask a question about a reverse mortgage, call us at 800-808-5548 to listen about all the benefits. Or if you have a specific question, reference to our, our private, prior, prior caller about credit. But, you know, you were talking about some of those benefits. Keep on going. I didn't want to stop you there. No problem. The homeowner, of course, is responsible for their property taxes and homeowner's insurance, like with any mortgage, with any home loan, and they have to keep current with that. But when it comes to their principal and interest that, we all have to pay on our uh, monthly payment. They can defer all of that to the end of the loan term if they want, and that all of the principal and all the interest can be paid at, at the loan when the loan term ends, typically when the house is sold. And, you know, I guess what is the calculation? One of the questions people ask me all the time is, how how is it calculated? I mean, obviously, I guess there's a calculation that the lender takes into account to say, you know what, we anticipate a 2% appreciation on an annualized basis over the next 20 years. Therefore, if you're doing, I'm rounding off numbers, by sure. the way, if you're, if you're doing a $200,000 loan amount you know, today on an appreciated value of $300,000, we're anticipating you know, that that home will then be worth over the next 20 years. Let's say you're at 62 when you do it right there, or 65 or whatever, whatever you need to be. You know, it's going to be worth you know, half a million dollars, I guess. Is that sort of the way the prognosis, the pro? The the, the <laughs> prognosis sort of works on something like that. Yeah, can't even say words this morning. Easy for you to say. Yeah. Yes, when we uh, get into our reverse calculator software and we do a reverse mortgage analysis for a prospective applicant, that's p- part of what comes into that is they have an amortization schedule that we look at, and the amortization schedule assumes a four percent annual appreciation, which Obviously, we haven't had that recently, but that's just the rule of thumb that they always use. And one thing for the listeners to keep in mind and, and to actually to be sure that they're, I want to make sure that they're aware of, is that because they're not paying interest every month, that interest amount is put on top of the loan balance. So over time, their loan balance does increase, and that's how it's possible for them to not be paying that interest every month. So it's very similar, you know, on a traditional mortgage to like a negative AM product. Exactly. So, and, and for all those listening, you know, what happens basically is you, you borrow a certain amount. So if you're borrowing on a reverse mortgage, let's say at, you know, a four and a quarter percent interest rate, just using that as an example, um, then that interest would be put on the, to the loan every year. Right. And then the theory is once that individual passes away, what ends up happening is that home gets sold, the loan gets relieved, and the difference then would go into whatever type of estate, trust, fund, probate, et cetera, that they would have. Gary, I have a question for you. Can you just give me a, a scenario that describes the um, ideal person uh, that is benefited by 
a reverse mortgage. What does that look like? Can you, can you give me a good scenario of, hey, this is the best time to use this? Sure. I would say anybody who wants to increase their monthly cash flow, um, anybody that's 62 years or older that maybe they have something that they want to do or something that they want to accomplish or something that they want to buy. And as far as the ideal candidate, it's just uh, as many reasons as, as people have for needing money or wanting money, their money that they get, there are no restrictions on that. They are able to use that for any personal need that they have. So some people pay off all their credit cards. Some people pay off their car and some people uh, need to get a new roof or they need to get new AC or they need to have their foundation worked on. So some people remodel and do home repair and refurbishment. Some people want to travel. Uh, Is there a time period? Uh, let's say that somebody um, uh, has one of those situations you described, right? They they want to do uh, – they need to free up cash flow to do some repairs, whatever, I don't know, uh, to the to the home. Is there a time period that they stay in the uh, in the loan? If they said, you know, hey, I, I uh, for the next five years would uh, like to free up a cash amount of cash flow a month, and I can do that through reverse mortgage. They look like a good candidate. They do that, and then they decide to sell or refinance the house to, to a traditional uh, uh, mortgage again. Is that even does that make sense? <laughs> well, they can do that, and there are no time limits on that. Um, but one thing that I did want to mention is that a lot of my applicants, they have an existing mortgage, and the reverse mortgage pays that off and gets them out of their monthly principal and interest payment. So that's a big reason why lots of lots of homeowners do this. You know, my dad, who is 71 years old, going on 72, in Dallas, uh, recently did a, a reverse mortgage as well. And the big reason why is he said, you know, I spent all these years – paying down on a mortgage, and now that I'm finally decided to take my Social Security, he deferred his Social Security, he said it's ridiculous for me being semi-retired to continue to pay a mortgage payment right now when I have a home that's worth a lot of money. I owe very little on it. He didn't want to take any cash out. He didn't want to bring any money back into the coffers, nothing like that. The only thing he wanted to do is stop making his mortgage payment. That's really the only thing he wanted, free up cash flow, be able to travel, be able to do things, and not have that obligation to come back. That's why he did it. You got through mentioning. I mean, when you have a, you know, it's it's a million dollar home that he owed probably less than three hundred thousand dollars on. So it just it just made perfect financial sense for him to do that at that time. Right. You know, at his age to be able to retire and not have to worry about that. So everyone has their own financial reasons in which they do things. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll find that that it can also be utilized as a very neat financial vehicle uh, in reference to estate planning in the future as well. And I think a lot of people have to look at where they stand, values, and then also what their ultimate ultimate estate planning and uh, and you know trust or et cetera et cetera look like, because that can have a big impact to it. Right, and traditionally it's been thought of as a needs based loan, and it can help with uh, home, the homeowners, the mature homeowners' needs, but it can also be used strategically in your financial planning and with the, with the aid of a financial advisor. One of the options that a, um, a homeowner or an applicant can use to receive their money is a line of credit. So they don't have to take all their funds out at closing. They can just draw on their funds as they need for whatever they need. So if there's some investment that they want to make, and they can draw the money out at that time. That is uh, awesome. Well, you know, again, another phone call. You know, it's amazing. You get mortgage guys on the radio. And and guess what? The phone starts ringing. Uh, Shirley, how are you doing? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank you for calling into the show today. I just have a question. Um, my parents are looking to use a rever uh, reverse mortgage to purchase a new home. Is that possible? Can that be done? In In Texas, that is soon going to be available. Where, where do your parents live? Here in Texas. Here okay. In okay. In every other state, that has been available since January 2009. That's called a reverse mortgage for purchase loan, where the the 
the home buyer uses a reverse mortgage as their loan, as their home loan, as their financing. Okay. And we had an election last November 5th, and one of the uh, measures on the ballot was Proposition 5, and Proposition 5, if if passed, would allow the Texas Constitution to be um, amended to allow reverse mortgage for purchase loans in Texas. Prior, uh, they had not been allowed because of our home state laws, and that that proposition has passed, and so those should be available soon. They're not available yet. Uh, the bill has been signed into law by the governor. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has blessed the program, but we're still waiting uh, for the title companies in Texas to come out with uh, an insurance product that's specifically for those types of loans, and we also have some work that needs to be done by the Texas Real Estate Commission as far as contracts and, and other types of things. So, Shirley, I've, one thing that I have heard is that maybe this will be available the first quarter of this year, probably like maybe next month or March, but we're not exactly sure what the time frame is on that. But if, if they can wait a month or two, uh, they'll be able to buy a house using reverse mortgage for purchase loan. Okay, well, thank you. That's very helpful and very informative. And okay. I love your show and I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling in. Thanks, Thank Shirley. You. And uh, be sure to either uh, go to the rat, realestateratpack.com and uh, shoot us an email or catch us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash forward slash real estate rat pack because Gary is a, 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 an expert we've had on the show before. He's extremely knowledgeable in the subject. And uh, if your parents are going to be using it to purchase, he's he's definitely somebody that I would recommend to uh, to to get that done for you. Her, her, her question had a, uh, a segue to another question, which is, what's the loan to value? Say, if somebody is sixty five years of age and they're going to go acquire a home, what do you, what's a loan to value? They are probably going to be needing a around a fifty percent down payment, and I was playing with my reverse calculator software with uh, like looking at uh, properties in other states to see what that would come out to be. And I kept coming up with 52.6% was the loan amount. So they'll, they'll need to have uh, probably around a 50% um, down payment plus their closing costs. That On, is amazing. Is there any particular types of houses? Is it limited to, uh, is it, you know, wide open on that? What does that look like? Well, this is a HUD program, so the the house has to be, um, and it, it's also FHA insured, so the house has to be a single family or one to four unit, like up to a fourplex, or it can be an FHA um, approved condo project, or it can be a mobile home that is on a permanent slab that was built after 1976. We're going to have to stop you there because we're going to go on a break. I hear the music playing. Absolutely. So we'll be back in a minute. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808- Five five four eight, and, and we're welcome back. back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just have too much fun at, at, uh, on the break. Even we're, that is correct. <laughs> we're eating, <laughs> eating, having a good time, freaking Mike out over there. He's like, "Dang, you guys are messing up my studio in here." Yeah. Anyway, I want I want to get back on the subject of acquisition because that's what I'm really excited about. And the legislature did pass it, and of course, it was Proposition Five that was voted on. Thank you, Harris County voters, for uh, helping that go through. It makes a lot of sense, and uh, it's something that is new and a new way to acquire property. So I, I hope that it's a huge success and it's going to give people a lot of options. And so what's your, what's your, what do you think your amount of your business is going to be, is going to be acquisition versus what you have been doing? Well, that, that just remains to be seen. Uh, I think the, it's just going to be an education process. Once people become aware of it, I think they're going to be excited. And once your colleagues become aware of it, too, I think realtors are going to be excited because it's an additional way 
for realtors to sell house sell houses in. You and I are aging baby boomers. Uh, not I you. don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, <laughs> and I thought uh, just, just, that just for men might hide that. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, we're either like eligible for this program or soon to be, and there is so like the number that falls in that category is increasing every day, and many of us have not saved as much as maybe we would have liked to. So this is going to be very helpful. I, I bought a lot of tickets. That's the cornerstone of my retirement program. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. on um, Considering this, this group of folks, if you have somebody that is on uh, uh, government benefits, uh, Social Security, something, is, is a reverse mortgage, would a reverse mortgage impact their benefits? If um, a reverse mortgage... Proceeds from a reverse mortgage, first of all, are not taxed because it's not income. They're just converting part of an asset that they already have. They're making it liquid. They're gotcha. converting part of their home equity. Um, so it doesn't, they're not taxed. It doesn't affect Social Security. However, depending on the way in which they get their proceeds, it can affect benefits for means based programs. Mm. And, uh, I would say consult your elder law attorney, and I can uh, point people in the, in the direction to do that because I'm not a, an attorney and I don't play one on TV. So, the <laughs> but on radio, right? Or, or <laughs> on radio is a different deal. On radio, it's a different thing. But <laughs> he's holding up his law license right now. We, right, we all see it. Right, but <laughs> but there is. I have spoken to two elder law attorneys and. They tell me that this this can be addressed by using the line of credit, where if, as you need your funds, that you draw them out, they come in, and then they come into your account, and then they go back out, then what I've been told is that should not throw you off of your benefits for your means-based program. But if you have a tens of thousand dollars sitting in the bank because you got a lump sum and you got it all at once, then yes, you'll have an issue with that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Is Go ahead. Uh, well, the, the thing, I have all kind of I, I, mainly, <laughs> more probably more of a statement is you know I've been in the real estate business a long time and you know this is finally a vehicle where, if it, where someone is downsizing they're going to get a, a large amount of equity in the home that they're currently in they can go and put fifty percent down probably still put some of the other money in the account because you know if you're a couple you know five hundred thousand of that's tax free still right and but they can go buy a new home and never make a home payment right and one thing that um, what I've read from where this is happening in other states, builders have found that I saw an interview with one builder and he thought, well, I thought people were going to use this as a budgeting thing or to help them qualify. But what I found is they'll buy more home, they'll upgrade, they'll choose the upgrades, they'll put more into their home because they're able to do that now that they don't have to make the monthly principal and interest payment. Well, this is obviously a subject that a lot of folks are curious about. We've got another call, Gary, so we're going to put on the headphones and... Not, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe, what I get. Yeah. That's what I get for uh, not being able to see Actually, the Actually, no, he is there. It is Danny Frank is on the phone right now. Ah, okay. Danny, how you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. Great show today. How are y'all doing today? Doing oh, great. Very well. Fantastic. Yourself? Of course, uh, this is I'm Danny Frank, who's well. our immediate I'll past say. chair of HAR, and of course he is with uh, Coal Banker United down in Pearland. So I want to give you a cheap plug there. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. What, what, you know, I was in I was in New Orleans last week. Yeah, I was listening on the iPad, and and y'all just y'all got a great show going on again today. And some great things need to be talked about. So, you know, you guys are just uh, doing it upright today. I, I think this is like the only other two timer alumni here. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Yes, we we've had uh, Danny on a couple times uh, on the show. So, yep, great individual. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've been privileged to hear Danny speak at the Deer Park Realtors Networking Breakfast. So, I don't know if we've met officially, but I know who you are. Well, thank you. I, you know, it's just the the a lot of law enforcement that coming down the, the bike is is just uh, a very important thing going on right now, and in. You know, I was I was reading some stuff the other day that I think the numbers about ten percent of the loans that we had last year were not qualify under the new loans new rules now. So it's gonna it's gonna be a tough fight. I, I would absolutely agree. You know, you're talking about the new qualified mortgage rules that went into place as of yesterday, actually. 
And, right. uh, you know, it's, you know, one of the things we've been doing a lot of training on that, and that's a very good point to bring up, Danny, is, you know, the one thing is I tell everybody, don't be scared, you know, still get out there. While it will limit some people from buying a property, it, it there's still a lot of money out there. There's real estate still moving at an all time high, and there's still a lot of lending going on. And, what what the industry is doing, while you know there's things that I disagree with, what the industry is doing is trying to move to a stronger borrower, a stronger candidate to purchase a property, so that you have neighbors that are better qualified and going to stay in that home, and you're not going to risk foreclosure. So on one side of things, we have to plan accordingly. On the other side of things, from a from a, a homeowner to homeowner, you know it, it's going to solidify your neighborhood. So so I definitely agree, well, but. You know, you have to get out there. You have to visit with an individual like Danny, and then Danny will put you in, in front of uh, a good mortgage guy who who knows their stuff generally. You know, me? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a, a good mortgage guy, and, and Danny knows a lot of them out there. You didn't, and, you didn't and slip Willow Ben. You didn't slip Willow Ben into that shameless plug. So no, no, you're, I, you're, I, you're, I'm you're... usually very calm about that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Danny, before we let you go, is there anything you'd like to, to tell everybody? You know, there's a lot of scams going on right now on, on all these off-site websites about properties being uh, rented out uh, for below-market pricing. I've, um, I got three listings that just came on the market here this past week, and all three of them uh, by different three different agents were all caught in, in the scam. And, and luckily, um, one of the things I'm teaching all my agents to do is to come in and really put in the Google alerts and, and see them as soon as we can. And, and if, you, if you're diligent as a realtor, you can come in and really make sure that those uh, scams are taken down pretty quickly to keep people from getting hurt. And it's interesting. You know, our, our dear friend Michael Roddy was, had an anecdotal thing. Yesterday he had a listing uh, for a rental, and they had a call on it, and it was off of Trulia. And the, she called in and thought it was $950 a month. Well, it was $3,950 a month. So that means, uh, you know, it used to be that we were worried about Craigslist. Now we now we see people are, are using the other uh, third-party aggregators to advertise. So, but yes, be very cautious out there. Well, Rob and Danny, how do those scams work specifically? Like, how does the prospective tenant get caught up in that? You want to take that, Danny? Well, what happens is the, 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 the scammer will always want yeah. you to wire the money, you know, and, and the bottom line is hire a realtor to protect your interest and never wire money to anywhere you know you should never have to wire the money a cash you bring a cashier's check to the to the real estate office uh you know you can double check the the uh the property owner's information look at driver's license look at uh, hcad make sure they're the one and the same you know if you're dealing with the owner directly and not with the real estate agent right very good to know very good to know well thanks for that danny we really appreciate you calling in hope things are doing well out there in pearland Oh, they're they're fucking hot. I'm headed to the office now. So, <laughs> well, good awesome. luck today. That sounds great, Danny. Well, thanks a lot for calling in. Continue to listen, man, and let's stay in touch. We'll get you back on soon. Right, guys. Take care. Take care. And, and so the attorneys from Atrilia don't call me. I will let you know that once uh, Michael notified them that it was erroneous. Yes, they pulled it down immediately. Immediately. So, um, so I just want you to know that you know they are. Don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do, I I mean it's a factual statement, and right. I want people to be aware that's happened. It truly just happened to be the, the the you know to be the one that they used. But it's happening on on Zillow and things like that. It does not happen on HR dot com because it, all the stuff comes from realtors. Right. It's not coming from you know somebody Third who party can, aggregators. It, well, they don't have to be. A, Broker or realtor, they can advertise. Right. And so that's that's what you got to watch out for. So uh, so the moral of the story is use a realtor, and you're represented that way, and you're protected that way. Are we going to write him a check? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's a good way to protect your interest and make sure that things are legitimate and done correctly, especially at a rental. Yeah. The, right. they, they, that's, it doesn't seem to be happening, although there was a, a friend of uh, Joe's over here was kind of almost taken for a ride on a, a million-dollar-plus house that somebody had given her a, a bad check for the earnest money but was going to move into it. But once somebody moves into a home, it's really tough to get them out. So yeah. I don't know what her angle was. Yeah, they were, they were like, already rolling over uh, electricity and doing all kind of crazy yeah. stuff. I mean, it was bizarre. And I don't know how that would have worked out or what they had in mind because I don't know what that scheme is. But but uh, there was not enough verifications of it was supposed to be a cash transaction, but there wasn't anything other than a verbal, oh, yeah, the, they've got the cash. And when somebody's in it's, the home like that's that, not a it, verification. you got to go through the, uh, the, the, uh, the eviction process, yes. unfortunately, because possession is nine-tenths of the law. Yeah. So that's what ends up happening. And, and, and guess the property code is written in favor of guess who? Yep. 
It's the written squatter. in favor of the tenant. Yep. <laughs> and so, you know, it's because you don't want children right on the streets. I mean, that that's a, a lot of it, and they don't want families on the streets. So, well, you know, something that I that I heard from uh, Danny that was a subtle little thing, but you know, it, this is one of those you don't know what you don't know kind of a things, and it's a demonstration of expertise. He was already instructing his uh, agents to set up a Google alert. I don't know if people heard that on the property, yeah, so I did that. Hear that. When when that property got a hit, when Google found information out there, it would it would alert the person who had set up the the Google alerts of that information being posted. So you can do this, you know, like I I have alerts set up for Improve My Credit USA, so that if something is posted, I get you know, hey, I saw you know, here's some information about Improve My Credit USA. Uh, shameless plug, we we got uh, nominated for the, or I'm sorry. Uh, one consumer voted number one in in Texas for the is that like four years in a row now fourth year in a row. Yeah. But where I was, was going to say this is that we got a an email sent to us like this person said, hey, you know, improve my credit USA. They announced it, and he because he got the Google alert on uh, improve my credit USA because he had an alert set for, for our company. So it was like, oh, that's so cool. But anyway, tying that back to the property, working with an expert, that's the kind of stuff that you never know goes on behind the scenes. And yep. that your agent is out there working to protect you, do that sort of thing. So when people are, whenever they question the expense of the expert, it's all that kind of stuff that they never know is happening behind the scenes. Just the little stuff that makes a professional a professional. That's to me that was really cool. I was like, that's that's sharp. Setting up an alert on the property just to make sure if somebody's posting a fraudulent, you know, rental amount that you see it quickly so you get it pulled. And that's an example of having technology work for you. You know, we talk about this all the time. A lot of technology out there, but one of the big things is utilize technology to supplement not not to supplement what you do, but to enhance what Absolutely. you do. Absolutely, it's a tool because it's a, it's tool. a tool that is it doesn't correct. replace us. And so that's a good example. It's never going to replace the the tried and true. You know, human touch of things, but that will be a tool you can utilize. We are coming up against a break again right now. How's that now. possible? I know. Can you believe it? So 800-808-5548. If you've got some more questions for Gary, we're down to the last segment. We're going to have to run. Give us a call. We'll be right back. When an irrepressible smile. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we're we're back. back. (laughs) We're in the middle of a conversation. I'm so glad you could join us. (laughs) We're over here just busily talking away about Google Alerts and crazy stuff that people pull on properties it's you know fascinating and, fascinating and stuff. actually uh you know when it, we wanted to get one segment in here that it's a, probably uh, an often misunderstood portion of the fha loan which chris i'm going to address with you which is the 203k as an acquisition talk about that you know people see a house that needs repairs they say right. i can't deal with that because i don't have the money to repair it right. but 203k can be something that could satisfy that. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot. There's a lot of loans out there. You have your two hundred three k. You got your home styles by Freddie Mac, uh, by by Fannie Mae. Sorry, um, Fannie, uh, Freddie Mac has all their own product right there. But one of the things that two hundred three k is 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 an FHA two hundred three k is actually divided into two different types of loans. You have a two hundred three k S, which is a streamlined version, and you have the full two hundred three k. And so, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of properties out there right now who need repairs. Right, they either don't have appliances, for example, they need minor repairs, they need enhancements, they just need general improvements. It's a dated property. You know, it might be that it's an, its bones are absolutely fine, but it just needs some help on it, right there. So there are ways to purchase properties out there and get the money that's required at the time of closing in an escrow to be able to make those repairs. Now, the two hundred three k is a very good product. It's an FHA loan. It's to the FHA loan limits, which have now gone up this year. So, you know, for, for all those who are listening, the new FHA loan limits for Harris County, Montgomery County, Fort Bend County are two ninety five five fifty. That's a, that's amazing. That's... Now, 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 what's amazing about this is even better, right? If you think about it, we had 271.050 was the loan amount last year, probably for the prior, prior three years. And all of a sudden this year, it's gone up to two ninety five five fifty. And the way FHA establishes it is by looking at the average medium sales prices and its percentage of that which means that we're actually seeing some appreciations in homes in the area, which Sub- we all know about substantial right Substantial depreciation, actually. Substantial. So, you know, to go up to two ninety five five fifty is a huge – got to realize you're almost at $300,000 for an FHA loan. 
And remember, FHA loans are still the best loans, in my opinion, for lowest down payment and lowest credit scores out there. Okay? Address that real quickly, uh, what's required down payment. You know, so, so a traditional FHA loan is 3.5% down. You can put more if you want to. Uh, it has upfront MIP, which is mortgage insurance. Um, it also allows you to go credit scores all the way down to a 620, in some cases 600. Um, you know, I'm not going to announce the 580 program because they're the hardest ones in the world to do. But I haven't you, seen anybody do one, by I, the I've way. never seen I've, yeah, Exactly. If, if you could actually qualify for, for the 580? 580 loan, you wouldn't you have wouldn't a 580. Have 580. <laughs> you'd have like a, <laughs> like a 750 if that was the case. <laughs> you know, well, but, those cash 22s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but think about it now. now 295, 550. So a 203K loan, what it does is... What is get, that? So that is a rehab loan under FHA. So number one, it's meant for your primary residency only. Whereas home styles you can do as an investment property also if you wanted to. So home styles? Home styles for Fannie Mae. Okay. So your 203, and you've got two different types, as I mentioned. You've got your 203KS and your 203K. The full 203K allows you to exceed the $35,000 in repair costs. Okay. It also allows you to make repairs such as foundation, whereas the 203KS, which is what they call a streamlined version, it does not allow you to make repairs to foundation, as an example, mm. any major structural repairs. So, you know, it, 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 every, as, as Gary was saying, just like in reverse mortgage, everything on the 203 program is a great program. The 203K program is a great program, but the type of loan you're going to end up doing is really dependent upon the property, what you're looking at achieving, what those repairs need to be. And you also have to be very cognizant there is a cost going into it. It's not the fact I'm going to go ahead and do a loan, and it's pretty cheap, and I do a normal inspection, and then I let the bank know how much money I want, and then I get that money out. No, it's not that easy, unfortunately. Number one is you do have to have an FHA, a HUD consultant, go through and do a feasibility analysis and walk you, and they are there with that process when you're doing those repairs. That's an upfront cost to the buyer also that is not generally cheap. And generally, what would that You run? know, I, I tell everybody it's going to range anywhere between 800 to 1500 A lot of times they base it upon the square footage of the property. Okay? So I've seen, I've seen FHA, uh, an FHA consultant go up to $2,000, and it's an upfront cost that a buyer has to put forward. The other thing is you have to realize is it's not as simple as just going through and underwriting the product. It's a little bit longer process. Okay? Instead of going through and closing a loan in two weeks – that's probably a loan that's going to take you about 45 days, even up to 60 days sometimes, because mm. you have to make sure that you have the correct consultant involved with it, that you have the correct feasibility analysis for it, that you have the correct contract written up correctly, that you have an appraise value that appraises the right way to be able to maintain those repairs, because the appraisal has a lot to do with it. FHA doesn't want to lend you on a property in which you're doing, I'm using this as an example, $35,000 in repairs, and yet you're only going to have an appreciation of $10,000 on it. Now, when they do a loan, they're going to do an appraisal on it. That is correct. Can, can the, the appraisal amount be less than what the loan amount is going to be? No. So, so, you, so you know, the way, the way an appraisal works, actually, on, on the property is let's, let's use rounded numbers. Let's use $100,000 as an example right there. Let's say you find a home that, that is currently selling an, on an as-is condition, as-is meaning that it needs repairs. So, and you've, you've acquired that for $100,000. And let's say you've looked at that property and you know it's going to need $25,000 in repair, okay? That home would have to appraise for the minimum requirement of $125,000 after improved value, and then you would do your FHA calculations based off of that, your 3.5% down, et cetera, right? Because you still have to have the minimum investment into the property. But that's one of the things. Now, if you that, under that same scenario... It's $100,000 as is purchase price. It needs $25,000 in repairs, and it's only going to appraise at $100,000. Then, number one, you bought it too high. Uh, and number two <laughs> is you're pretty much going to make those repairs out of your pocket because, unfortunately, there's not enough room to be able to make those repairs happen. Because, remember, part of it is you're repairing the property to improve the value. And if it doesn't improve the value, then they're not going to authorize you to go ahead and get that rehab. Uh, the whole 203K are... You would limit it. Is there any kind of uh, maximum amount that you can do? 110% of the proposed appraised value, and then you can't exceed really 50% of the cost of the of the purchase price either right there. So, so if it's a $100,000 house, you could have as much as $50,000. That is correct. But it can't be anything more than, than 110% of, that, the, of, of the, the acquisition. Appraised value. Okay. That, uh, the acquisition. Oh, of the appraised value. That is correct. So, With, so there, there's several things out there you have to look at. Every, everyone's a little bit different, right? 
And remember, the 203K, the full 203K, is actually the one that allows you to do more extensive repairs to the property. It's not the streamlined version, but the full version. With the uh, the market, you know, uh, being what it was uh, years back, and having a lot of foreclosures hit the market and that sort of thing, uh, were, are you st- are you still seeing? Is this is a, is this a um, uh, a tool that is used by investors still uh, heavily? Two hundred three k cannot be used by investors. So oh, yeah, remember, sorry, remember right. so you an FHA loan is a primary, primary, primary residence only. Gotcha. If you want, if you are an investor, you would have to use the Fannie Mae product, for example, which is a home style. We're using that as an example. Home style. So, so there are I, products I, I, out there. I knew there. that, and I right. totally forgot. Yeah, no, no, no problem. <laughs> you know, and and you know, the home style products are very good products as well. They allow you to do larger loan amounts. They allow you to go up to a four seventeen, which is the conventional loan amount, you know, in in, in the state of Texas. Um, so it allows you to go up to the four hundred seventeen thousand dollar loan amount. You can generally do. Up to fifty percent of the cost, you know. So let's say you're buying a home for two hundred thousand dollars, and he's two hundred thousand dollars in repairs, as long as it doesn't exceed the purchase price and does not exceed the total combined appraised value. You could do something on a, on a home style product like that. Yeah, let's talk about the the S, the streamlined version. Kind of go over what that is, and that's typically where you have a maximum. I think thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five thousand dollars is your maximum right there. So you know, a two hundred three K S. I'll give you a perfect example. It's really meant, let's say, for example, you find, and I'm going through this right now, you find a HUD foreclosure, really good pro, really good home, really good condition. However, the home doesn't have any appliances, has zero appliances, doesn't even have a sink. Needs paint okay. and carpet. Exactly. Needs, uh, needs carpet. Uh, paint is pretty good and then has a little bit of wood rot on the outside. Okay. Probably has about, you know, in, in this case, the example, I'll tell you another $100,000 home, probably needs about $10,000 worth of repairs. However, the home, as is today, still stands in a value of $125,000. Okay? That's as is. That's even without repairs. So that's a perfect example of a 203KS. You're not going to exceed $35,000. Your your repairs are a minimum of $5,000. Okay? And it's a streamlined version of it. So you're not having to go through all the paperwork with the full amount. You can do it. You can actually limit some of the I don't want to use paperwork, but you can limit some of the requirements associated with having to go through. Is the time frame shorter on those? Still same time frame. You still have to have some come out and assess it, though. That is is correct. correct? You still do an assessment. And it's out-of-pocket expense. That is correct. You still have to do that. But what is really interesting, though, is they they do happen a little bit faster. They are a little bit easier. And because the repairs are smaller, it's actually a little bit easier to manage that process. Now, the homeowner doesn't get a check. No, that is correct. The homeowners never get a check on any one of the programs. And so, so they, you know, they pay their contractors. Always, that is correct. Your contractors have to be vetted. You know, you have to be able to use a GC, and you have to be able to know that that money gets managed through a third party. Generally speaking, either the title company or the or the mortgage company who's managing that process. And typically, the the contractor working on will get paid right at funding, or is there going to be another inspection? No. What's going to happen is, generally speaking, is the contractor is going to be paid upon whatever the set schedule is for repairs, and there will be an inspection associated that the repairs have been done correctly. You know, because last thing, last thing FHA or anybody wants is to be able to hand a check out to somebody and say, here's your $10,000, and then the work not be done. So you have to have some accountability back and forth. You know, we got two minutes left. Can you believe this? Gary, what would you like everyone to take away from today? Um, I would like to let anybody know that if they want to be updated on the progress of the reverse mortgage for purchase program and receive updates as we move towards the implementation and availability of that, they may email me at G as in Gary, W O O D as in dog at prolendingmortgage.com. And then anybody can also call me with questions at 281-542-0562. If you'll shoot me your email address, I can keep you updated as we move forward. And we brought program. Gary on because he is the expert on this. And, the you know, I learned some new stuff today. Absolutely. I'm very excited about this new program. Well, yeah. you know, and just to add, as we're, as we're shamelessly plugging Gary right. here. Uh, <laughs> I have no shame. Don't stop. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I've known Gary for a number of years now, and not just expert, but f- just a phenomenal character, good quality uh, individual, which is indicative of the folks we have on the, the Rat Pack. I would absolutely agree. And Mr. Kelso? You know, I, I would tell everybody is remember one thing, like Danny was saying, is there are a lot of changes going on in the market industry, in the mortgage industry right now, a lot of change in regards to qualified mortgage. Don't let anybody sway you from not trying for it. The worst-case scenario, understand where you stand today. I mean, one of the things I was telling Joe, 
you know, I've seven leads went your way this week. Individuals who were interested in buying a home but needed a little bit of work on their credit. You yep. know, told them to go over to you, do a free credit assessment. Get started. Get started right now. Get through that process. You know, the best time to buy is when it's best for you. But you have to go through and you have to get the process started at one point. Get the so, ball rolling. That is correct. So that, that's one of the big things I always say. You know, look us out on the real estate rat dot com or look us up on Facebook. A lot of fun, a lot of good information out there. Until next week, we will talk to you soon. We're out. And you've been listening to the Real Estate Rat Pack. The question is, who's Frank, who's Sammy, who's Dean, and who's the other guy? Uh, Chris, is, yes, Chris Frank. is Frank, I'm he's Dean. Dean, and I'm Sammy. Yes, yeah. he's Dean. <laughs> right. yeah. So tune in to the really big show every Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on 100.7 The Word, KKHT.